back. Claude Bowers here with you. Thanks for joining us today here in our Super Channel 55 studios. A uh, special guest that I'll be introducing in just a moment. And connecting you today with someone who can uh, be an immediate blessing to you as a, a believer, especially a follower of Christ, and as a person of interest to anyone watching this program today. And I'll tell you, if you miss this program, all right, there'll be some things you don't know and some things you'll learn and some insights to be gained. This is a very unique person, and my guest today, and I've known her for quite a while. She's just a gift to the body of Christ, and uh, she she has connections with the, the, the. She has a term called activating kingdom purpose. She is a person dedicated to kingdom purpose, and I want to show you how to apply that in the life of an individual. And so. Today, my special guest from right here in Orlando, Grace Connaught. Grace, welcome to the program. Thank you, Claude. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Well, every 10 years, we uh, see each other. And <laughs> <laughs> then you go, and then you go and take on the world for Jesus. I mean, it's an amazing thing. Introduce yourself to our viewers. Look at the camera and say hello, and if you have a word, her name is Grace, right? And that my Grace is flowing in this room. Oh, Grace, amen, yes. amen. I'm so thankful to be here today. God is good, Claude, all the time. Yeah. Uh, let me just mention to you uh, some things I want to highlight in just a minute. Uh, this lady is connected with a ministry uh, in another on another continent that has the largest, as far as is known, is the largest indoor church in the world, and it was built debt free. Seats a hundred thousand people. She's also connected to probably the most powerful Christian church in Europe, located in in, in France. And she worked with Miss Florida right here in, in Orlando area. She worked with Reinhardt Bunke Ministry. She works with Ron Canole. And that's just the beginning. She has her pulse, hand, her spiritual pulse of what's going on in the world today, in the body of Christ, and just speaking to her and knowing how, how she's committed to the work of God and how she's traveled so much and met so many people. She's a connector in the body of Christ, and she's a worshiper. That's the only way she said to introduce me. I'm a connector and a worshiper. So I'm so glad to get back with you and do a program with you, Grace. You live right here in Orlando, but you travel a lot, don't you? I do. Yeah. I do. I yeah. travel all the time. Yeah. Let me just mention some, uh, you say, uh, activating kingdom purpose. Grace has been in global ministry for over 15 years. Strategizing, aligning evangelists, worship leaders, pastors, heads of state. And um, she's, Grace is to worship, has experience, had been with Ron Canoli, Don Moen, Donnie McClurkin, um, Kurt Carr, so many others, Canoli Brothers, Canoli, Sam Canoli, Canoli <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> and she, her purpose is to have a clear passion for evangelism, worshiping, and propelling the kingdom of God. And that's what got my attention. And we can talk about around the world. We can talk about each continent you're touching, people that you work with. But again, how would you describe yourself and your, your call to the work of God? Well, I, I started in global ministries working for Ron Canoli. And at that time, he averaged 35 countries a year. And I was basically in charge of his schedule. <laughs> So I, Claude, made pastor friends all over the world, and I stayed with him in that capacity for seven years, but along the way, I started helping some other people, like Don Moen, uh, like his sons, um, Kurt Carr, Judy Jacobs, Israel, some that you mentioned, and, um, and we just thank God. But one thing that I learned from Ron Canoli, and uh, I had run his Academy of Praise for, um, coordinated that for the seven years, internationally and locally. Um, one thing I learned is he said, when you remain a worshiper, God can take you and make you anything he needs you to be. And I love that statement. I feel like that's the posture of my heart. I'm available to God. And um, Say that again. I'm available to God because, you, Claude, you, God isn't interested in your ability. He's interested in your availability. And so when the Lord says, Grace, will you do this? You know, if I know that he's asking, my answer is yes. Yeah. And you've been doing a lot of work with and for the Reinhardt Bunke ministry, the late Reinhardt Bunke. Uh, 
Claude, I have um, been so blessed and privileged to be around that ministry. It's been about eight years, and I've helped um, Daniel and Claude both with special projects and uh, Daniel has actually done a lot of worship projects. People may or may not know that. And um, they've really become a, almost a worship label in their own right, C-Fan Worship. And um, I've helped them a lot with that. And so, um, but no one has made such an impact in ministry. Um, they have 79 signed, um, 79 million signed decision cards. Uh, unbelievable. That's that's a physical card that somebody has signed because they've been at a service and different accepted. Different continents. Different continents. Focus on Africa. But Claude, that ministry has 10 international offices, offices all over the world, and they do events all over the world. So you're correct in saying it is. Their focus has been Africa for the Crusades, but they do crusades in other countries. They do meetings in other countries. So um, I, I have learned a lot from them. Just looking back, the the day recently that uh, uh, Ron Hart passed, Monkey passed and went to be with the Lord, what was happening in his ministry that day? It, Claude, it was so amazing because, and I think you and I had this conversation earlier about legacy. Mm -hmm. Daniel Kalinda and a gentleman named Peter Vandenberg, who has been with Reinhardt for 40 years, um, his team, the, the CFAN team, was in Nigeria with a crusade when when um, he passed. I, I just think that there's nothing, you know, more to legacy knowing that it's been left in tremendous hands. Daniel has been a, an incredible steward of what the Lord has given him, and it, I believe that we'll take this ministry even further than uh, Reinhardt could have imagined. So while he was passing in transition, his team was in, on, on another continent. In Nigeria. In Nigeria, actively doing a crusade. Correct. So his 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 uh, successor is moving on now, of course, and that's been in place for quite some time. Correct. But you've you've done quite a bit of work for them and, and him, haven't you? I have over the last eight years, and like I said, even though I've been able to bring my supply to what they're doing, I've learned a tremendous amount from them, and and I believe that Reverend Bunky was one of the most focused people I've ever met in my life. His entire being was making sure that someone knew that that Jesus loves loves them, God loves them, and um, that they were saved. Reinhard Bunke, you know, is German, right? And he gave me a, last time he was here with me as my guest. He gave his testimony of how he received Christ and how it came to his family in Germany, and it goes back to the roots of Azusa Street and out of the revival that eventually influenced the world through Azusa Street. There was a connection between his grandfather, Azusa Street, and a, a man who got lost in a storm, a snowstorm in Germany, wound up in the home of the grandfather, led him to the Lord, and that was Reinhardt's opening to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think about <clears throat> that great awakening of last century, beginning of last century. What do you think so ahead for the 21st century? Well, I think if you look at some of the things that are happening today, like even with um, this recent event that we had in Orlando called The Send that was back in February. Yes, pronounce that for me. The Send, S-E-N-D. -E. Mm -hmm. okay. And that was held in the stadium here the, where right. the soccer team plays, at the Camping World Stadium. Yes. And, um, you know, that is a collaboration of ministries. It's not just, you know, Christ for All Nations putting it on or Daniel Kalinda putting it on. It actually was um, Christ for All Nations, Lou Engel, Michael Koulianos, um, all of these ministries, uh, Todd White, um, coming together. I think there was about 10 of them. And now they've already planned one, filled that stadium, that's done. They've planned one for Brazil in February. Brazil is wide open to the gospel, and of course, it's already been having a revival, but talk to us about that perspective. Well, Claude, um, out of all the places I've worked, I've worked in, I've been blessed to work in over 80 countries in the world. I haven't been to 80 countries, I've been to quite a few, but um, Brazil is one of the most on fire for God. And their Brazilians are a passionate people that um, love the Lord and are excited about His kingdom, and um, I believe that that we have been experiencing a move of God that most people aren't aware of in Brazil. Yeah, as we go forward again, I want to ask Grace about uh, a, a unique building project, uh, probably the largest indoor church facility in the world. Seats 100,000 people built debt-free. 
and I sure want to explore that more and find out uh, at a later time. But uh, And then the great work going on in Europe, probably the most powerful, influential, on-fire church in Europe is in France. She knows about that. So Grace is a unique person. She's a worshiper, and you said as a worshiper. What do you mean by a worshiper, Grace? Well, it, it's more than just a song. You know, even yeah. Ron Canoli always taught us that music and worship are not synonymous. You know, it's really music a, and, and worship. worship are not synonymous. Yeah, yeah. Um, worship is is really a posture of the heart. It's a mm -hmm. posture of your um, how you are in relationship with the Lord every day. And so you can worship with music for sure, but it is not equivalent to worshiping with music. It's yeah. it's more of an attitude of the heart. So um, I just really believe when anyone decides to say yes to the Lord and then just make themselves available. Um, he can do some amazing things. So for our viewers, pastors, leaders, Christian leaders, this is a lady you want to know. I don't have to know everybody. I know Grace. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, a common thing. Yeah, yeah, I've got two or three people like that. In the political world, I have one, and, I, and in the kingdom of God, I've got a couple, and you're one of those, one of those Praise people. Praise God. <laughs> so when I first met you, Grace, you just moved from Columbus, Ohio to Orlando. You have a very interesting testimony of your early days, but how did you come to know Christ? Well, Claude, I was just a blessed uh, young lady. Um, I had wonderful parents, and um, my dad was first a pastor, and then um, he became later a hospital chaplain. But, Claude, I never knew somebody that loved the Lord so much as my father, and that's just a precious thing to, to grow up with. I was serving in the church at a very early age. I'm guessing that maybe Angela and I have similar mm -hmm. testimonies, but I was... Um, you know, always just in relationship with the Lord and wanting to be available to Him, even as a child, even though I didn't have those definitions. Yeah. And then as I became a teenager, I became more and more hungry for the Word and started really following more the Word of Faith movement um, and um, came, you know, to Florida and just has exploded from here. Yeah, you're German, aren't you? My father was 100% German. My mother was from North Carolina, so we got a little Southern that's, in there. That's a great blend, right there. <laughs> Good combination. So, um, you're single? I am single. That is correct. Okay. And Nobody's asked yet. That's nobody what. asked. Well, <laughs> okay, I'll leave that alone. All right. All right. Let, me, um, let me, wow, this is like the interviewing the person that wrote the Webster's Dictionary, you know, and <laughs> you just, you don't know which page to start on here, but... Uh, you're connected to a huge ministry in uh, Nigeria. Yes, sir. Is that the one that has a big church? Yes, sir. Can we put that uh, that item on the screen? Tell us about this huge church that's built debt free. It, it, and that's something else. That that picture to me is is something else. This pastor and his wife, um, Pastor Paul and Becky Aneche, in uh, Abuja, Nigeria, which is the nation's capital. Um, they've had a church for years, Claude, and the Lord gave him this vision, and he fulfilled this vision debt-free in a time when the economic <clears throat> situation in Nigeria was not at its best. And um, But praise God. And so, you know, the thing I said when I realized that I, I've worked with a lot of wonderful pastors in Nigeria, and a lot of them have larger churches, uh, but the thing that I said is, Pastor Paul has the people to fill it. You know, he really does. Uh, ni the, the Southern Nigeria, Claude, most people don't know, is completely on fire for God. And you don't necessarily hear about that because the Northern is known as more, more Muslim. Mm -hmm. But the South is, is very much on fire for God. And the second largest venue, I think, is also in Nigeria um, that has 50,000. And, I, you know, I spent five days in a church there that has 35,000. So, I mean, it's, um, to me, it's just incredible what is happening in the south of Nigeria. And when you talk about continents or locations that are really on fire for God, I guess that's one of them. And then Brazil, right? Brazil is another. Yeah. Completely on fire. Yeah. What about uh, Kenya? Well, Kenya is special, Claude. I have a friend who happens to be the spiritual daughter of, of Reinhard Bunke, uh, Teresia Waremu, and she is incredible. Uh, her ministry has been going strong for years, and she had meetings, Claude, imagine this, in the, in the town of um, 200,000 people would come for her meetings on a monthly basis. Uh, I think she had those for 12 years, and now she has... 
a wonderful church um, in Kenya and um, debt-free also, $50 million facility, debt-free. And uh, the president of the country is her friend and the vice president's wife is her right hand in the church. And it's just amazing. Uh, when I went, she flew me there for her opening in 2016. Um, Reverend Bunky was also there, and the president was also there to dedicate her building. Unbelievable. Yeah. Heart of, uh, she has a heart of gold, and Kenyans are beautiful people, and they love, love the Lord. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about this uh, big church in, in France, maybe the strongest oh, oui. Christian church in the world. <laughs> Claude, this has become one of my favorite places in the world. Uh, Pastor I, I want to go there sometime. Uh, yeah. Please, please. Yeah. Pastors Ananyo and Natalie Pedro. Um, church is about 28 years old, and it's one of the most worshiping churches I've been in. They uh, currently have around 13,000 members, and then they also have um, about 10 satellites throughout uh, France and Europe um, that are, are building. So they're really taking France and Europe by storm. Well, um, what's another place you want to talk about? around the globe? Well, India. India, sure. You know, India is interesting because I have a friend there who has a denomination. Um, I would say that he has about um, at least 600 churches, I think. And you just don't, you know, know about these things. That's, that's what I think I want the people to know, Claude, is that, you know, God is alive. He's alive in Europe. He's more than alive in Africa. He's alive all over the world. Sure. And one of the, um, if somebody were to ask me what has been one of my favorite parts of this 15-year journey, it's really meeting his precious servants, his pastors, his leaders, all over the world, Claude, that are giving everything that they have for the gospel to help their neighbor, to help their person, to help their church member. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It well, really to is. have a footprint of around the world like you do, you'd have to do something at the United Nations. What, oh. you, what was your <laughs> event for going and working at the United Nations? And well, Claude, this goes back to being a worshiper. Okay. Okay, and that's why I wanted to kind of mention that. You know, it wasn't really in my wheelhouse at the moment, <laughs> but the, a friend of mine was working on a project, and I, I really detected that he probably needed some help. And I said, you know, Kevin, I'll partner with you. And let's do it together. And in about six weeks, Claude, we had an incredible opportunity that came across um, within the year after ISIS was formed in 2015. We were starting to see a lot of, you know, <clears throat> incidences all around the world, not so much, you know, on the Western world yet, but um, more in Middle East and Africa. And um, we were able to host an event at the United Nations that had over 30 international speakers uh, Tony Perkins came, General Boykin came, Jonathan Kahn came, uh, Steve Strang came. And, you know, I felt like one of the purposes of that meeting on the backside was that um, Steve Strang brought his editor um, with him and they published, I think, about eight articles online. And those articles got so many shares, Claude. And I felt like it helped the body of Christ become aware of what was really happening yeah. and, and as Christians, what we could do. Because prior to that, um, uh, you know, Christian persecution seemed like it was far off, seemed like it was distant. Um, it was right after the Kenyan shooting that we mm -hmm. actually hosted that event. Yeah. And um, so, but again, it's an example of the Lord said, Grace, will you do this? And I said, sure, you know, and in six weeks we were able to put that event together um, just for his glory, you know. Yeah, you know, that's something we have in common. You know, I've, I've, I've been to the United Nations. I was invited Amen. there, yeah, and toured the facility and had some great experiences there. The United Nations, um, um, let's, put, let's put Grace's titles on the, on the screen, okay? I've got two up for you. Uh, one of them is her website. You want to... Make contact with her. She, she's a blessing and, and so many, skilled and blessed in so many ways of helping Christian ministries. She's a connector in the kingdom of God and so much more. Let's uh, put that back up. And, uh, and, and Grace, give me, you said something about the three things you focus on. I'm looking for it. In I, your work. Yeah, I've been able actually to put it into three things, okay. Claude. Um, preaching, consulting, and connecting. Preaching, consulting, and connecting. 
And the Lord in the last couple of years, you know, has had me going out and sharing a yeah. word of activating kingdom purpose. Um, the consulting, I've consulted ministries for years. Usually, Claude, what happens is when I speak with someone, the Lord gives me a word for them. He, he really gives me a word of encouragement of what some of, no matter where their ministry is, what's, what are some of the next steps they can take? Have they thought about doing this? Have they, and they're practical, Claude. You know, sometimes people don't have a lot in resource. You know, um, sometimes they do. I've worked with great ministries and I've worked with very small ministries. Um, and then finally, the connecting is, you know, I've been able to help with events in over 80 countries, hundreds of events. Um, all over the world with wonderful pastors and top, the top, you know, worship, today's worship leaders and evangelists. And I've just been blessed to do that and seen amazing things. Do you have a big corporate group behind you, your staff and all, or is it just grace? Well, Claude, <laughs> right now it's grace and the Holy Spirit and Jesus, but um, we do well. And, you know, it kind of helps me uh, move quickly, <laughs> I think. <laughs> you're, you're an apostle in the body of Christ and, and the giftings of helps. You can help so many people. And I'm glad that you're watching today. If you, if you want to publish a book or, I don't know, just about any scope, and you want someone that has an ear for the whole world and has an understanding of the geography of continents and people on those continents that connect you with, right down to um, just being a, meeting a worshiper herself. Grace is just a great person to know. And let's, we have a couple more pictures. We have you with us, a group, I think an artist, art, artistic group or something. Let's put it up on the screen. Tell me the picture we're going to be seeing here in a moment. Who's that group? Oh, that was earlier this year when we were recording in Nashville. That's Don Moen, his son, Michael, who's one of my favorite people. And then the gentleman I've written a lot of songs with, Joe Vasconcellos, mm -hmm. and then um, Don's wonderful manager, Jesse. Yeah. And Don has been, I've worked with Don since probably 2010. And I love what his ministry has, you know, the impact that he's made around the world. He's a wonderful man. Okay, and uh, uh, you have connection with Miss Florida. Let's put that picture up. This ruling, you know, reigning Miss Florida right now is, is an amazing woman of God, isn't she? She really... Tell us about it. Introduce her to us. Uh, well, absolutely. This is Michaela McLean, and she is the reigning Miss Florida, Claude. And what I love about her, I've been actually friends with her family Claude, I met her grandparents when I was in Kenya. You just never know um, how the Lord works, and she lives right here in Claremont. But she's the rainy Miss Florida, praise God. And But what I love about her heart is that she has an incredible uh, ministry already. She's She just graduated from Alabama University last year, and for several years now she's had a ministry called Brave and Beautiful, and it ministers to... Um, you know, young young people all over the world. But I really think it's a message that, you know, for adults, young people, anybody would benefit from. Uh, she might be Miss America one day. I tell you, she, she really, I really believe that. She's, um, a, she's a, a passionate follower of Christ, isn't she? She really is. And what was her, what was her skill that she, when she won Miss Florida, what was her? Claude, she's a dancer. Yeah. And um, she danced to the Lauren Daigle song. Mm -hmm. um, and... She's just a very skilled dancer. She's been dancing for years and years yeah. and anointed. Well, we're going to close out this program with a little bit of uh, the young lady you met, the singer. What's her name? Lauren Daigle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to close a little program with a little bit of her music, but no dancing. All right. But I want to tell you, you give her my message. All right. I, th I saw her on television, and she is truly one of the most talented dancers I have ever seen in my life. If she doesn't. I mean, I've never seen, she's from Claremont, right? She, Correct. Yeah, Correct. I mean, it's, uh, but she's, she's, she's strong, strong witness, and extremely good in her, in her craft. She's going to wow. impact a lot of people yeah. with yeah. what the Lord has for How did her. you connect with her? Well, her, when I was in Kenya with my girlfriend for her, her building dedication, her grandparents were there preaching, and her daughter, her mother is here in Claremont, and I became friends with her mom. And um, several years ago, and um, so just personal friends. Yeah. What about uh, uh, songwriting? You working with the artist producer from Big Daddy Weave? Yes, Jeremy Redman. Uh, Claude, one, this is one of the things you just make yourself available. Um, I have been blessed to write songs with uh, my friend Joe Vasconcellos, mm -hmm. and we've written songs that are signed with Sony Music. 
and have been translated into, uh, released in South America, translated into Spanish. Uh, actually, Joe sings them in Spanish um, and then Portuguese. And they are on fire. One of them in Spanish went number one already this year, Claude. So we are just very excited about what the Lord is doing with our music. But um, Big Daddy Weave, Jeremy Redman, is the guitar player producer for Big, Big Daddy Weave. And his studio is in Nashville. And so we go there for the production. Well, Grace, you have a, a touch uh, on a global ministry and for a long time strategizing and aligning evangelists and worship leaders, pastors, presidents heads of state, and um, you've helped orchestrate ministry events, television production, music production, reaching millions of people in 80 nations. Amen. From Columbus, Ohio, visit by, via Orlando, where you live now. Amen. And I commend you. Oh, it's all God, Claude. Yeah, and, and what are those things? You, 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 when I think of you, I think of preaching, consulting, and connecting. Absolutely. That's your gift and so much more. It is. And, and Claude, my gift is really one of encouragement, to encourage the body of Christ that, you know, when I go to preach, it's to encourage you that you can step up and be available to God and make a difference right where you are um, in the kingdom and watch what God will do. It's amazing. Are you big in social media? I am, Claude. I am. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I love it. What do they? What do they? What? The, how do they connect with those? What's your tag? Oh well, Grace cannot. Grace cannot. Yes, Grace cannot. Well, Grace can. Yes, yeah, Grace. <laughs> I always say my friends call me Grace. Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for being oh, with us today. Thank you, Claude. So do you go out blessing. and speak in churches? Or? I do, Claude. And like I said, it's just a message of encouragement, a message mm -hmm. of fire. I, I just want to see people step up and and be all. And, you know, Claude, there are several ingredients that people need in this marathon race that we're in, you know, to run successfully, yeah. like love and courage and faith and um, just break off discouragement, help them, you know, get past whatever's holding them back to move forward in, in all that God has for them. I guess today is Grace Connaught. She's joyful. She's German. She's a graceful person. She's a connector. She's an apostle in the connection of helps in the body of Christ. And um, she is just someone you want to know and, uh, and become connected with if you like to connect with what God is doing in the world. It's a unique position. And you work quite primarily alone. And uh, God's given you all these contacts. I'm glad we reconnected, and I'm so glad to have you on the program. I want to have you back and talk about the connection between Azusa Street and Reinhard Bakken's grandfather and how that revival from what was what, from Wales mm -hmm. that started Wales. yeah, a, a hundred years ago. Yeah. And I'm hoping something like that will happen in this in this century. You know, I believe well. it will, Claude. So I really good. believe it will. In the last few seconds, what about what's going on in France now with that maybe the strongest Christian church in Europe? What is it? It is. They've got 13,000 members, Claude, and they are on fire in, in, in Paris. Yeah. You know, what's it people, like to be in one of the services? Unbelievable. It's electrifying. Yeah. One, yeah, unbelievable. And they are worshipers. They are praisers. And um, I highly recommend if you are in France, you need definitely need to visit Charisma Christian Church. Yeah. So great to have you today. Thank you, Claude. Let's enjoy a little bit of music by Lauren Dangle. Is that right? Uh, I've, I've become a fan of hers and listening to her gospel music and a great talent. So we'll enjoy a few seconds of that as we get out of the program. Remember, in everything we do, we're reaching out to you. I'm Claude Bauer, Super Channel 55. God bless you. See you next time. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Before I lift my cares, I will lift my arms. I want to know you, I want to find you in every season, in every moment. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart.